so uh, first welcome for people in the first row please do not take picture i see you natal i'm sorry i know your name so uh, my presentation is one configuration management sdn my name is uh, michael uh, quickly who i am for people who didn't see me in the last uh, 10 years speaking about free software and everything I'm a sysadmin at uh, Red Hat, uh, working in the open source and SADAR team, which is a team where Dave is also working. Uh, the goal of the team is to help upstream project to be successful, a strategic upstream project. So that means from time to time to do configuration, to do configuration management, like organizing event, sometimes doing design, and sometimes getting a sysadmin to fix uh, whatever was set before we acquire a company or when there is problem, like when another sysadmin is leaving, you need to prop another one. Usually it turns to be me. And for that, I'm mostly using uh, Ansible uh, quickly because uh, I'm using Ansible as a way to get uh, as much talk as possible to be accepted. It's a very popular topic, but just to be sure, who never heard about Ansible? Can you raise your hand? Good, so there is a few people. So I will still explain, sorry for the other. So what is Ansible? Ansible is an orchestration tool uh, that's mostly used uh, around server. Um, so for sysadmin, we will see later that it can be used by uh, also a network engineer or anything, um, or any kind of people, but this is a SDN room, so it will be about uh, network. Um, that's similar to, in purpose, to a lot of tools like uh, M Collective or Funk or whatever control or random botnet on Windows in the sense that it's uh, supposed to be uh, executing a command remotely at uh, some uh, larger scale. <coughs> One of the advantages of uh, Ansible when compared to everything else is that it do not have an agent. That means that you do not need to install something on the remote system, you do not need to maintain something on the remote system, and that's already quite a lot. I mean, if you are sysadmin, you will know that uh, everything that you do not maintain is something that do not crash, something that do not pay you in the night, that let you sleep, play, drink club mate, whatever you want to do. I mean, and in order to do that, it uses SSH by default. I say it by default because uh, there is all kind of other way you can use Ansible, but for what interests us is um, using SSH. Uh, yeah, that's a quite flexible uh, way to um, just uh, execute remotely a uh, module. So for example, uh, let's say you are an admin, you want to shut down your whole production, you just type that and that's it. Suddenly you have a lot of free time because uh, whoever does that would likely be fired, at least if I am the boss. But um, if you want to do a large scale problem, you just, sometimes just one command is not enough. Sometimes it's enough, I mean, see that. If you want to do more, uh, there is the concept of playbook, which is basically just executing several commands. So it's like a script, uh, but because I know that, even if it's a, because this is a developer meeting, I want to be sure that people understand this is not a script. This is a description of several steps, and it looks like a script because there is loop, there is conditional, uh, but no. It's mostly a custom uh, domain-specific language uh, on top of uh, YAML, because everybody loves YAML. Hopefully, if the tool did appear 10 years ago, it would have been XML, and people would be crying right now. But it's totally different. Because YAML, well, it's nice, but it's just description. You have also uh, Jinja. Uh, I don't know if people are using uh, Python, but Jinja is a templating uh, language, one uh, out of uh, 100 templating language in uh, Python. This is a national sport for Python coder. And uh, that's used for templating a uh, file for expression and everything. And because just adding step one by one is not really a good idea, there is also a concept of a role where you say, I want to deploy, a, I don't know, a quick server on that server, so I create a role, and the role will just execute everything in one logical unit for deploy the quick server, just uh, at the same time as a Minecraft server and everything, so you can use your cloud for really important stuff and business critical game. Uh, there is a con various concept of uh, dependency between roles. If you want to set up PHPVB to discuss about the Minecraft server that you just set up, um, but you, you can just uh, deploy PHPVB that will pull, pull Apache, MySQL, and everything. Um, 
everything can be done on multiple system, which is uh, uh, which is one huge advantage of uh, Ansible when compared to other stuff. This is used for rolling update, etc., etc. So that's just the basics. That's the whole concept of configuration as code, which is something that most sysadmin know. Maybe the student do not know. Maybe the developer do only the part about code. I was expecting to get a network uh, network engineer. So now I explain basically what is Ansible. I guess the people who are late uh, know already what is Ansible because I'm not going to repeat. So now what about SDN? That's the second part of uh, the presentation, or at least of the title. So I hope that a lot of people there uh, have been already hearing about SDN. I'm not a specialist. So from what I know, SDN is the new revolution for network, because the new revolution for sysadmin is container. And tell me if I'm wrong, but from what I see from uh, discussing with uh, people, there is a traditional way, which, which is you have switches, you have uh, router, you have everything. And you just connect by SSH. When someone opens a ticket, you verify everything, and that's it. That works. Uh, otherwise, we would not have a working internet at the moment. Everything works because you have like a simple fixed config. You do not need to make a lot of change, and it's very manual. And it seems that, well, the only way is a uh, SDN. So for people who do not know, I just cut and pass from Wikipedia, which is not exactly uh, easy to digest. So I will just focus on the part which is programmatically control. Uh, the whole idea of using Ansible for that is to, well, even if it's not a script, it's still programmatically controlled, which permit to separate the data, such as um, IP address, firewall rules, uh, ACL, password, from the exact hour you have. I see that as very useful for uh, heterogeneous network. Uh, I don't know how it's at your work or well, your home if you have like your own uh, Cisco switches. But at work, we decided to drop Cisco to go to Juniper. And that means that suddenly we have a million of investment hardware. We are still running and we have a new hardware and we need to control both of them. And for that, yeah, you need separation. So here come Ansible network module. Um, so there is a lot of uh, device supported. I'm not going to give a list. I just took uh, the only one I know, which is not a lot. So for example, there is uh, F5, Juniper, Cisco. There is uh, several Dell OS. I didn't heard about PanOS, but it seems that it exists. Otherwise, people will not um, speak about it. <coughs> um, so I'm not actually going to show everything. It's going to be well, quite boring, and I like when I do not like when people are too bored in a presentation. So I will just focus on a quick example. Uh, not because most of them are cut and paste, but they try to organize everything. So there is always for each brand the same type of module. So the first one you need to be aware of uh, that Strats module. When you want to manage your whole set of uh, hardware, you need to know what is running, what are, I don't know, the uptime, so you can be sure that you reboot everything from time to time, the version, uh, the IP address, it seems to be quite important, especially for network. So there is a whole set of uh, facts module. We are just here to return facts. So that return information that can be used later for decision, such as reboot only the system we are uh, running system, I don't know, 5.3.6, or uh, uh, update uh, everything for s switches we are doing IPv6 and everything. For example, um, so I took only the Juniper stuff because that's quite complete, because that's the one I plan to read later, and I'm sysadmin. If I need to read documentation for a talk, it has to be also useful later, so I can spend more time on IRC and uh, discussing about systemd and Docker and all life was better before. So there is, for example, the Junos fact that you just execute as a module. It's not executed directly on the router. Um, Ansible is written in Python. I think I'm going to surprise no one to say that Python is not running on Cisco, Juniper, whatever switches. So you need to execute on a Linux host. It uses the Juno's uh, EZNC module. I hope that it means something for someone, because I have no idea how it works. I suspect it's some uh, REST API or something like this. You need to give a password, a username, SSH key, and everything to connect. And yeah, so you get your information. 
Well, if the goal was just to get information, you do not need to have your own table for that. You can just pay an intern that connect to everything and write on a paper and that's it. You get your report. You want to do more. For example, you want to configure. So it turns out that, well, since the last slide, uh, Python is still not running directly on the switches, so you still need to execute on a host. Then there is various interface. Uh, people who already use uh, Cisco know that everything is done line by line. If I'm not wrong, when you get a config file, it's something uh, line oriented. So you can say, yeah, for that configuration, I want to get, uh, for example, no DHCP. For that switches, I want to get a DHCP snooping on that port and everything. Uh, so the line oriented part is quite interesting because suddenly you can put some configuration in one part of the playbook, some configuration in another part without mixing. If you do not like this because uh, you want to control everything, there is another solution which is using a template. You just give a template file and you do whatever you want with a Jinja. If it's uh, easy enough for uh, people to use it, it should be also easy enough for a network uh, sysadmin to do that. And for example, uh, one, one specific example is the Junos uh, config uh, module, which is, uh, again, uh, usually it's a Junos for the Junos family and something config. Sometimes they do handle uh, more than the standard way, which is a line and a template, for example, for Junos. And I've not been paid by uh, Junos, not yet. Uh, they handle rollback, so if you fuck up completely the system, well, you can come back uh, at the previous, uh, previous step, which is, again, quite useful. I mean, I do not make mistakes, but I heard that some people do, so that's for them. Um, sometimes you want to do more than just getting facts and configure stuff, such as executing command. So as the name implies, surprise, it executes command and returns your output. For example, you want to know uh, what is the current status of uh, who is connected or the route or anything like this. Well, you can use that. So it's quite a low level interface in the sense that you do not have a high level view of uh, I want to get the root. It executes that set of command and that's it. You get uh, strings that you need to parse uh, by yourself and that's where you start to regret of uh, using uh, Ansible and not a Python script. But um, if you want to get more, there is also a various module. Each of them are specific to each family. So there is for the non config operation, again, for Junos, if you want to install a package, so with a Junos package, you install package. You just give a file name and um, I don't know how it works, it copy, it um, install the package and that's it. Um, there is various uh, high level constructs for specific uh, module. So for example, sometimes not for Junos because I have only uh, four modules and I did spoke of the four of them. Uh, for NixOS, no, not NixOS, NexusOS, uh, which is for Cisco Nexus, I think, you can specifically configure uh, the NTP. Uh, so that means that you do not need to know the exact command and there is some uh, level of abstraction. In case, I mean, that's not that it happened, but in case Cisco decide to break something on compatibility, well, maybe you can isolate yourself from that. Um, the good part is that it can be combined with a non-network, which is a whole part about uh, DevOps, where developers discuss with ops without insulting each other. For example, um, you install a VLAN, no, you install a VM, then you can uh, set the VLAN for that VM. So the v VM is for people for sysadmin. The VLAN is for people in the network uh, team. And you just want uh, to have one single operation in case you decide to do a lot of VM, but uh, you are not, uh, well, I would not say crazy, but you are not uh, rich enough to pay for OpenStack and the 1,000 people needed to maintain. You can do all you want directly with Ansible. And I think that's all. If people have questions, you can ask them now. And we have 10 minutes left, so ask me anything. Even if it's not related, if it's for another talk, if it's, or I can work with someone as marvelous as Dave, or this kind of stuff, or this kind of stuff. And if you do not want to ask me questions right now, you can uh, contact me by mail on, uh, on IRC, and not on the several uh, stuff that I list. And, uh, 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 shit, I forgot the, well, not on Google Plus, not on Facebook, and this kind of stuff. So, again, if you have questions, I'm also okay if you decide to upload from, for 10 minutes. It's good for my ego. Uh, not that I need that, but um, still good. So, no question? Uh, 
so, uh, so yes. You say SSH and other possibilities Yeah. So the question is, uh, Ansible is using SSH, what are the other possibilities? Um, so there is, for example, you can connect using uh, Funk, which is a message, wait, which is a remote execution tool, you can use a salt. There is a system where you can connect using a CH foot, it's not SSH, it's a connecting locally, but um, it's kind of the same, you connect, you get a root. You can connect to Docker image. There is something to use a guest fish to connect uh, to a VM which is not running. There is a jails. Uh, there is no telnet. It could be fun, but I could not find a telnet server to test it. But yeah, you can use Paramico. What? Yeah, SSH is good. Yep. On top of this, uh, maybe it's important for people to know that there is a raw connection plugin. Yeah. The raw connection plugin makes it possible to send command without SSH and uh, I mean, or whatever the connection you're using. After that, you can just send raw command without knowing Python. So right. it's something that you can be using for stuff that don't make Python. Yeah, so uh, it's not a question, but I will still whip it. So. The gentleman just at the first row said that uh, you can also use a model called Wo, which basically allows to execute command without Python. Uh, I did use that for starting stuff on NetApps. It was using Ansible to do uh, two jump posts and then starting to execute something on NetApp. So you can also do that, uh, but then it's equivalent to using expect, which is not very high level. And I should have done that. It would have been like one or two slides more, but question are fine too. Yep, another question. How do you think Ansible will interact or recapitulate with the, the, the young management of the, of the networking devices? Uh, I understand they're proposing the mechanism of logic, but I, I, I think that there are some other things to be connected with the, the, the young models, the, the, the network models of the device. So the what model? The young network uh, solutions. So Okay, so the question is how does Ansible work with the NetConf model? Yeah. Uh, I have no idea uh, because I've been waiting since too long for getting access to switches at work to test that and I got access to last week and I had no time to break uh, the network uh, to test that. So I don't know. I did see NetConf somewhere in the doc, so there is something. Uh, but if you have more complicated questions, uh, you can either go on the IRC channel, which is, um, oh, there is someone who, okay, there is NetConf, co oh, that's it. So I think you need to ask uh, that question to that guy. Come on, come here, you need to, you, you seem to know more than me. Oh, speak. Okay, so um, there is in Ansible 2.2 um, a module named netconf config that is using Python and NC clients on the, on the client side. It's all in the Ansible docs. Well, if you have any question, is ready to answer anything. You got internet access, which I don't. Yep. Uh, you? Uh, to what degree have you actually tried using configuration management yet? Have you used any configuration management yet? You've got Judith here, one chasing me, putting on the screen. Uh, that could be rude as firewalls, which is quite multiple places. Um, this seems to just summarize this being, yes, you can do it, but I don't know to what scale it's possible. So the question is, uh, at what scale can we use that? I'm not planning to use that at a large scale because my job is mostly maintaining a lot of small projects. I know that uh, for non-network uh, stuff, uh, there is Workspace managing their whole cloud using Ansible. I know that they have some patches and maybe some uh, specific way like uh, starting several uh, Ansible controllers to deploy everything. I know that uh, OpenStack is using Ansible for the whole CI and I'm pretty sure that there is someone somewhere there that can explain for uh, that can explain that to you, um, but I have no idea of the scale. I guess that for something like 100, it should be fine. Maybe more too. Then I have no clue on how it would work. 
And with Ansible, you can decide to start multiple process at the same time. You just need to connect to something using uh, the regular uh, API, so it's not going to be a huge bottleneck. So I do not see any limitation beside uh, CPU, and uh, because that's in Python, it's not exactly the fastest uh, language in the world. I'm not sure if there is some limitation regarding um, uh, regarding network, so it should not be a problem there. There is no disk issue. It should work fine, and I guess you will likely hit some uh, limitation regarding the expression of what you want to do. Like, if suddenly you want to configure one million switch, maybe that means that you need to get a one million IP address in a file, and I'm pretty sure we are not testing that. And I'm pretty sure it's not the right approach, and you need something more high level. My point is more that uh, currently the sysadmin and NetOps are doing stuff in the traditional way, but deploying a complete SDN solution is a huge uh, effort, so maybe start to get people uh, comfortable with the idea of uh, doing a script and uh, deployment and automation can be a small step. Because if something gets wrong, you can still go back uh, like you did before. With an automated system, you try to fix stuff and the system is fixing all your fix. That's not great. Um, my use case is mostly to be able to delegate uh, that with a git commit and uh, let the developer from the community to break their stuff instead of me breaking stuff for them. And I think there was uh, someone uh, having another question. Now I have a kind of a follow-up question to the end, whether it was an instance event configuration or more a protocol-oriented, like the Salvan or Nordstrom. Uh, can you speak louder? It was more based on a follow-up question on his side that it was actually more of an uh, answer. It was mostly based whether it was a Nordbound uh, intention or a Salvan intention to be a CN controller. Oh, uh, so the question was already answered, that's what you said? Kind of, yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm not sure to know what you mean by southbound or outbound, so... The SDN controller itself. So you know that it's centralized to the SDN controller. Okay, and yeah, no, there, no there is no SDN controller per se. That's so the question was, uh, is Ansible similar to a SDN controller? Where, where, where would you put it? On the yeah. northbound to the SDN controller or the SDN controller itself? Kind of an So where would I put uh, Ansible? I would place it on a server which is well protected because once you have access to the whole network, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, currently, the way we are using for server is to have one server which is uh, having a SSH key that can connect as root to everything. Uh, the way I would do for switch would be the same, maybe on a separate part, on a separate network. Uh, where you would put a bastion where people can connect to go to the switches, where well, you would place that. Uh, you can also do that deployment from the laptop of the sysadmin, which is what I would call the start startup mode. Uh, but I think it's not a good idea. But it works. If you want to test a lab, you do not need anything but a laptop and uh, maybe a lot of uh, hardware to do something. And Ansible is quite flexible. You want to run it where you want. You want to set up a Raspberry Pi, it's running. You want to set up on FreeBSD, it's running. I mean, I've been doing both. So. Uh, I think I have no more time for questions, so again, if you want to contact me, I will be there either tomorrow for other talk or you can just find me somewhere trying to get my way to the next talk. So thanks for coming.